In this video, we're going to tie a slightly simplified version of Dave Penchowski's Bad Hair Day. This is a super effective fly that has great action in the water. The craft fur just comes alive in the water and the good amount of flash in it really makes it a great attractor pattern. It's unweighted so it rides very close to the surface. Uh, you can fish it with floating line or if you want it deeper, fish it, uh, fish it with sinking line. So let's get started. The hook I'm using is a Mustad 3407. This is one of Mustad saltwater hooks and this is a size 2. And one of my other favorite hooks for this pattern is the Gamakatsu B10S and I tie it in both size 2 and size 4. I'm using Vivas Power Thread 140 denier and chartreuse and I start the thread oh about an eye length back just to give me a marker for the front of my body and I make close to touching wraps all the way back to the bend of the hook and the bend of the hook on this hook is about the base of the barb so I take my thread back to that point then I bring it forward to just in front of the hook point and let it hang. The bulk of this fly is made from extra select craft fur and craft fur comes mounted or growing I guess if it were real hair on this cloth backing and rather than trimming directly from this cloth backing what I like to do is cut the backing into roughly one inch squares and that makes a bunch that is just about right for this fly. It keeps my sizes consistent and it's a little bit easier to handle. So for the tail on this fly we're just going to grab, grab all of this craft fur and I'm going to cut it next to my fingers. Now for the other clumps, later on I'm going to cut next to the, uh, the backing. But for this one I'm cutting next to my fingers because for the tail I don't want all of that under fur that's there. It's a really thick under fur and this is a piece of craft fur that's about three inches long. So I'm going to trim that even a little bit more. And and then place it right over my thread and give it a couple of loose wraps and then tie it down back to the bend of the hook which is again just at that barb go forward and tie that little bit down at the front and let our thread hang. Now the remainder of our craft fur will be reverse tied. Now what reverse tying means instead of the, the uh, craft fur pointing to the rear, we're actually going to tie it in with the craft fur. We're going to re reverse the direction and tie it in with the craft fur pointing to the front. And as I said earlier, for this, to maintain bulk on the body of the fly, I want some but not all of this thicker under fur as it were. If it were a rabbit hide or something, it would actually be under fur. So I grab this and I cut it, oh, quarter to a half inch from the backing and you don't want to use your best scissors for this because craft fur will dull and it makes a huge mess as well so you can see all this thick under fur now I don't want quite that much of it so let me trim this down a bit and I'm trimming it down to have eh, maybe a little bit smaller than a dime size uh, clump of it past my fingertips. Now to reverse tie, I'm a right-handed tire, so and I'm sorry for being off camera. I'm going to move this to my right hand, and I want this craft fur distributed all around the hook shaft, so I'm going to actually insert the center of that bunch over the hook shaft, push it back against my tail, and then take just a few loose wraps right in front of my thumb and forefinger two or three just and then transfer it to my right hand and bind it down more tightly and you'll see that I have this this little clump of, of craft fur there that helps to give the fly body and otherwise it would be very slim in the water. Now at this point I just sweep all these fibers back and bring my thread forward, just pull it forward, and I like to hold the craft fur back out of the way with a hair clip 
and that keeps things out of the way. And I build just a little thread bump. Don't tie it back onto the actual craft fur, but build a little thread bump right in front of it. And then I move my thread about a sixteenth of an inch in front of that to tie in my next material, which is Crystal Flash. Now you can use Crystal Flash. This is Pearl Crystal Flash. You can use Crystal Flash. You can use Polar Flash, Flashaboo, anything you like. But I, I have four or five strands here, and they're full length strands, and I just wrap them around my thread, roughly at the midpoint. Hold them in my left hand and take a few loose wraps to bind them down back to the craft fur. And at that point, I want these distributed around the hook shaft. So I'm just going, this is why I took loose wraps. I'm just going to push those onto either side and that one wanted to come around. So you just keep working with them till you get them roughly around the hook shaft. And then I trim these to length while they're still in my hand. And we want them roughly the same length as a tail. And as I cut, I just move my scissors back and forth. And that gives me a little bit of randomness to the, to the cutting there. All right. Now, with our first clump tied in, and let me sweep the all of that back and clamp it down. We repeat that same process with a second clump of craft fur. And here's one I've already trimmed. And I push it back over the hook shaft against the previous clump and tie it down there. Now at this point, I just repeat the same tie down process for, the, for this clump and the crystal flash in front of it. Now with my two pieces of reverse tied craft fur tied in. My final clump of craft fur for the nose is a chartreuse clump. And just as before, I shove it over the nose of the hook and up against the white bunch behind it. Take a few wraps of thread and then transfer back to my right hand. And you're going to lose a few fibers here, which is totally fine. And now we want to check to make sure we have some room behind our hook eye to form a head, and we do. So I'll give these a few more tight wraps. And show you a little trick here as well that I didn't use before, but to help shove the, the craft fur back, you can use something like this large straw, and that will help hold it while you sweep it back with your fingers. And then I can take my hair clip, Bring my thread forward, and just as we did before, we create a bump of thread against this chartreuse bunch of craft fur. And you see all these fibers off the nose. I mean, craft fur is so messy, you cannot avoid those. Or it's very difficult. I can't, anyway. And at this point, we take our whip finish tool and give it a five or six turn whip finish. And that tag into our thread off and then certainly apply your choice of head cement to this. I'm going to trim a couple of those there just to make it a little neater. And that is the bad hair day. It is a super effective, and you see all that mess from those fibers coming out. It is a super effective fly that has just great action in the water, almost like a fluke jerk bait in the water. It's uh, unweighted, so it rides close to the surface, or use it with sinking line to fish it deeper. Hope you'll give it a try. I know you'll like it.